In terms of 20th century art, of course, African art will range from very traditional forms to modern in both content and style. Both men and women are active in art, although they do specialize based on the specific culture and based on the type of object that's not that unusual. We see the same thing in the West, where uh, women tend to be associated with, for example, uh, needlework, ceramics, etc., traditionally, and men are associated with other forms. So it's no different here. And we're back to dealing with the Benin. Now, this should sound familiar. After all, they are the same peoples that we dealt with a little while ago with the waste pennant of a queen mother. So, same group, much later. And we're starting with, or we're dealing with, the royal ancestral altar of the Benin king, Iweka II. And we're seeing this photograph very, very recently. Of course, it's a much older piece. Uh, it's photographed in 1970. It's there in 1897, uh, when there were, at the time, still 17 of these ancestral shrines in the Benin Royal Palace. Only one of them remains today, which is the one we're looking at. And this is made of a base that, that base that makes the table is a sacred river clay uh, that's built up to produce the altar itself. And then we see varied materials and objects, uh, such as a copper alloy altarpiece depicting a sacred king and his entourage. And all of the metal pieces that you see there are this basic copper alloy. We also see heads with tusks. I have a bit of a detail on the left there of what these tusks look like. Now, these are meant to represent various kings. They believe that the uh, ancestors can give power to the king at the time. We also see wooden staffs and metal balls behind. Metal ball frequently symbolizing, even in uh, many African societies, power, as does the wooden staff. The heads represent the durability of a king's action. The glistening red surface, the clay surface, is meant to repel evil. The tusk carvings themselves act as a visual history of the king's greatest deeds. This is not unusual. In the European tradition, we would see uh, bards or authors recording the deeds of a great king. We're seeing the same thing here, but they're doing it in visual terms. We see the same thing in uh, Mesoamerica, for example, with, with the Mayans and the Aztec. The white color of the tusk reflects purity and goodness. The tusk is also a phallic symbol, and it's meant to depict male virility, uh, the idea of strength and power sort of captured in a single symbol. The staffs suggest generations of ancestors based on their segmented forms. So one ancestor building on the shoulders of a previous one. The idea that we are all standing on the shoulders of giants. The heads stand for wisdom and divine guidance of the kingdom. The idea that the king must have incredible wisdom and that there's always this element of spirituality coming into it. Sacrifices made at the altar would purify the king and bring down the strength of his ancestors in times of great need. At its base, this is hierarchical. This is basically placing the king within a lineage above other people. It's also a way for the kingdom as a whole to strengthen the king, not in a physical sense, but in a spiritual sense. You can imagine being the king and having a very difficult decision to make and watching the people around you make a sacrifice to this altar to give you that strength might give you the confidence, knowing that they have confidence in you, might give you the confidence to make the right decision. There's a bit of psychology that goes into it. So it's a really unique piece, and this is the last surviving uh, altar of its type in the Benin Palace.